Yo, this is Zist. Today we're going to follow up on the gameplay ability system. In particular, we're going to talk about when a client has access to data that it needs to send to the server for the ability to work. And that's definitely more difficult than either just a client or just a server ability. To show you the difference here, on the left side, we have a server, uh, a local player on the server. This is a listen server. I push the F ability, and that's a server-only ability. It starts on the client, runs on the server. And so that ability is very, very easy. So this is my player F ability. This derives from my XCL gameplay ability base class. And it overrides the activate ability. And it just says, if I am the server, I have authority. Then get the player state, get a component, spawn a bot. This is a C++ implementation, and then end the ability. It works over here, also here on the client. If I push F, it, it spawns both here on the client and here on the server. So very easy, working great so far. Now we have another type of ability, which is I have my mouse, and I want to spawn explosions where the mouse is. So the, the client knows where the mouse is, the server does not, and the server is the one that needs to spawn this, the explosion. So we implement this just by having the client package up the location of the mouse and send it via RPC to the server. You can see it, it affects both worlds. And if we go to the client side, the client can also affect one thing to note here is that these are both doing exactly the same thing, but you notice that the explosions on the client side are not so powerful. The reason is because each tick that the ability is active is when I'm spawning the explosion. And so because this is networked, it gets a lot fewer executions per second because of how the ability if we go to the green one here on the left, look at that, it just rockets the guy way off into space. It's it's totally order of magnitude different. Let's come over here to this one and blow it back. I don't even know where it went. It went so far, it's it's gone. Ah, there it is. And so that illustrates that the player who is local to the machine is going to get different performance than the player who is remote to the machine in the number of or abilities that activate per second. So you probably want to throttle this guy on the server and don't let him do stuff like this. The explosion ability is definitely more complicated than the bot spawning one. For this one, the client in green here needs to generate target data and send it to the server. That's what this function is right here. This part in particular has to be implemented in C++. This is what it looks like. There you go. This is what the set target data transform looks like. This, I believe, must be run in C++. I don't think that there's a blueprint version of this. So the client generates the data, calls the C++ function. That sends the data to the server. On the server, then, we validate the client data, and then we spawn an actor, whatever we're going to do with the location that comes from the target data, which was set here by the client. So how do we get this to work? That is the discussion that we're going to have today. As usual, I'm reading from my notes, which are available on ZisGG. These notes follow on a high-level conceptual overview that I did. I will link to that video if you haven't seen that. If you're having difficulty understanding this, I recommend that you go and watch this video, read this article. As we talked about, when sending data from the client to the server, some C++ seems to be required. If you're a C++ developer and you just want to see the code, on my site, you can click on these two links and jump straight over there. We'll get there later in this video. So the concept behind the client-server ability is that the client is calculating the target data and is sending that to the server 
via RPC. So the client needs to generate the target data. Usually this is going to be based on mouse position or something else that the server is not aware of. You then make the target data known to the server via RPC. And optionally then, you execute the server code or some approximation of it in order to get local prediction. The server's responsibility is just to wait for the target data to arrive from the client. When the target data arrives, we validate it because some clients like to cheat. And then we execute the server code using the validated data. My solution to this problem is the client to server abstraction. The goal is I want to be able to write as little duplicate code as possible each time I want to make a new ability. So these are the two methods that I have to, to create. Activate local player ability and activate ability with target data. So I implement this in XCL gameplay ability client to server. The new methods are activate ability with target data, which we talked about above, and notify target data ready, which we'll see below. I'm also overriding some XCL gameplay ability methods, the activate server ability and the end ability cleanup. Again, we'll see that below. So you example client to server ability is an example implementation of the client to server variant of a gameplay ability. In this class, the activate local player ability method, which is overridden from the base gameplay ability is client only its purpose is to gather the target data info and invoke notify target data ready. Activate ability with target data runs on both the client and the server, and its purpose is to execute the ability. The header file is super simple. There's two methods. This is all it takes to define a new ability that sends information from the client to the server. The activate local player ability method in this case, we're overriding from XCL gameplay ability. And we're saying whenever there's a local player initiates the ability, first thing, we calculate the data, the target data. In my case, I'm just saying we're going to send zero vector over, but this could be the mouse position. This could be any kind of data that you want to send. Once you have the target data, you have to package it up such that the gameplay ability system will send it through to the other side, to the server side. This is boilerplate code. When that's done, we call notify target data ready. Activate ability with target data implementation is where once we have the target data, either because we're on the client or because the server has received RPC, then we retrieve it, we decode it, we validate it, and then we know that on the client and server both, the data is ready to go. We do whatever our ability is. Here, I'm just logging, hey, this is what the number is that we got. Then we end ability. Notify target data ready is implemented in the XCL gameplay ability client to server class. What this does is it takes the target data that the client produces and optionally a gameplay tag and it tries to commit the ability. If that doesn't work, we cancel. It determines if it should send an RPC to the server or not. It starts a scoped prediction window, makes a copy, probably for anti-cheat, of the target data. Then if it should notify the server, it's, it actually calls the RPC. Then it runs activate ability with target data. So this runs both on the client and on the server. This is the client invocation here. And then we clean up the ability system component. In order to implement notify target data ready on the server, there are a couple of helper methods required. The first is activate server ability, which is an override of the XCL gameplay ability class. And all this does is grab the ability system component and hook into this target data set delegate in order to call the notify target data ready method whenever we get these events. And because we're doing this, we also need to clean up. So in end ability, we clean up our ability system component. So I'm going to show you my actual code, but you know, I don't take responsibility for this. If this breaks your computer, that's on you. You know, I'm just showing you this as an example. My intent is that you're going to make your own classes. 
So my base ga gameplay ability class derives from Lyra gameplay ability. It adds some helper get methods, whatever, you don't care about those. Some find methods, you don't care about those. This one's important. Activate local player ability, which by default just executes the blueprint. Here's another important one, activate server ability, which again by default executes the blueprint. In my activate ability class, or in the activate ability method, rather, there's some logging. This is a great trick with Unreal 5 console variable logging, highly recommended. If there's a blueprint activate from event method, call it. Otherwise, if there's an activate method, call it. Otherwise, if it's a locally controlled player, whether on the server or remote, we're calling activate local player ability, which is this one that we added here. So that's optional for derived classes to implement. Otherwise, if server activate server ability, oh, sorry, this one was local player and this one was server. So this is the default behavior of XCL gameplay ability when an ability is activated is call this method for local, call this method for server, you can do that however you want. Now we'll take a look at XCL gameplay ability client to server, which derives from the base XCL gameplay ability. Now in this one, we are adding activate ability with target data, which we expect to be overridden. In fact, we mark it as unimplemented, the C++ implementation. And also notify target data ready is also added here. And in order to support these two things, we have activate server ability, which just hooks into the ability system component. And then on end ability, we have cleanup, which is unhooking from the ability system component. Notify target data ready. Again, this is exactly what I showed you on the site and you can copy paste this from the site. Here's one that's not on the site, but I did use to make it easier to use blueprints. So you can do this yourself if you want. This is a specific derivative of client to server. This one is called client location to server. And you can see the implementation right here. Basically this takes a transform and an application tag and it packages it up the transform and then it calls notify target data ready with the target data and the application tag that came through. So you were to call that this set target data transform is the method that my G ability was calling from the client. Well, congratulations, you made it to the end. If this video doesn't suck, give it a like, maybe subscribe, share it with somebody who might be interested. If you have ideas for how I could have done this better, please let me know in the comments. Thanks guys, see you next time.